Hello everyone. In this video, we show you how we turn this bench grinder into a dope belt sander. This old bench grinder has served us well over the years, but we needed a sanding configuration that allows us to quickly remove more material when working with metal. And the stone discs just don't cut it anymore. We decided to retrofit this guy instead of buying a proper 2x72 belt sander because one, 2x72 belt sanders are way out of our budget. And two, we don't have the shop real estate to accommodate the footprint. In order to fit the retrofitted components, we removed the guards and the wheels from one side of the grinder. We modeled everything on Fusion 360 and printed the sketches to scale so we could use them as templates. We included a link in the description to the plans, so if you want to retrofit your own grinder, the plans are totally free. Using spray adhesive, we stuck the templates on 3 16 inch steel plate and roughly cut them out with our angle grinder. Moving over to the drill press, we drilled out all of the mounting holes, first using a small bit as a pilot, then drilling them to size with a step bit. The remaining material for the slots were removed with the bandsaw. We removed the sticky paper and did the final shaping for all the pieces with the flap disc on our angle grinder. Using a nut as a spacer between the pivot arm and the mounting bracket for the top pulley, we welded a makeshift hinge using an M6 bolt and some nuts. If you haven't had a chance yet, hit that subscribe button because, well, it's a nice thing to do. We welded a nut onto the pivot arm for the belt tracking adjustment bolt. I test fit the pulley and the adjustment bolt to make sure nothing binds and then proceeded to burn myself. If you're following along at home, this step may or may not apply. Our bench grinder has a half inch arbor, while the crank pulley has a 5 8 inch bore. So I used epoxy to glue a 5 8 to 1 half inch bushing onto the arbor. If your grinder has a 5 8 inch arbor, then the set screw on the crank pulley should be enough to hold it in place. 
with everything prepped, we can dry fit all the pieces. The first thing is securing the main body by the three bolts, but unfortunately for me, I didn't measure the hole spacing correctly when modeling, so we were off a bit. So using the guard that we removed from earlier as a template, we marked where we needed to elongate the holes and use the file to remove the material. So the second time around, the main body mounted just as planned. After bolting everything up, we can align the backing plate as well as the rest where they need to be and weld them into place. And with a quick coat of paint, we have this beauty. And the moment we've all been waiting for is a total failure. This 1 6 horsepower bench grinder doesn't have enough power to move the extra rotational mass, so it never gets up to full speed and pretty much useless. That's all for today. Only joking, we were able to find and pick up this one horsepower grinder for a really great deal. So we stripped everything from the Dinky Craftsman and moved it over to this one. We won't bore you with the disassembly of the one horsepower grinder because it's pretty much the same for all grinders. The only modification we had to do was re-drill the mounting holes since the one horsepower grinder had a larger hole spacing. So similar to before, we used the guard as a template to get the correct spacing and drill them out. Then we mounted all the pieces, making sure to space the pulleys with stacks of washers so they're aligned. And behold, a functional belt grinder. If you want to attempt this retrofit yourself, the templates are available through the link in the description. If you learned something new and or enjoyed the video, please hit the like button below and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.